Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Yo guys, and welcome back to Secure the Ultimate Guide, and today it is Fountainhead uh, Part 3. And this is going to cover all the, uh, the watery bits. The, oh yeah, the, 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 the swimming with a giant carp and the nobles and the... Is aye. It, is there a lightning dragon in this one? It is, yeah. Oh, okay. So this is just like all the rest of Fountainhead out of the way. And then we can continue on with the funner parts of the game as opposed to this fucking hellhole. Mibu Village for some reason? So now we are going to... So I mentioned this earlier in the Mibu Village part, but we're going to buy the mottled purple gourd because for the bit that's coming up, it's going to be somewhat useful. You don't necessarily need to get it. You could just use, like, I guess, pacifying agents. I, I didn't. <laughs> I, so I actually can't even remember if you can take pacifying agent underwater. That might be the reason why we bought this. Um, I no, I've never bought that. Well, so you don't <laughs> need to buy no, it. That's the thing. So but, I never have. But... It could be useful, so that's why I'm just pointing out kind of thing. So now uh, we just go on to the, the, the bit here, and then we can Where just we like... fought the uh, Shaolin soccer guy. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I existed. So did I until I played this part of the game. I was like, what is that film? <laughs> I know it's in my mind somewhere. I've seen it once. Ah, core memory. Yeah. So this... Um, I'm pretty sure... Right, so I'm going to admit... There is one quest that I could, I just could not remember how to do, and I think it's this old woman here, and you like speak to her, and she should like teleport somewhere, but you don't get anything out of it. So it, doesn't, it just doesn't matter. She goes to another rooftop, uh, and then you swim over there and talk to her, and then that's it, I think. So she's meant to like kill a bunch of the, the, the elders or something. No, she kills one of them. She kills the one that's like her husband was, and she, like, her husband gets turned into one, and she kills that one. Well, and the point is I wasn't able to like trigger it, but also just doesn't mark. Just you, kill him yourself, it takes two seconds. Yeah, you don't get anything out of it. So, swimming down to the depths to avoid the giant fish. Uh, well, the fish automatically goes away as soon as you start swimming in here and getting to this point. So, what we're gonna do is, there's like two, uh, like the red scale, uh, carps. Now, I done this bit for you. You take the gatch and sugar before you come into the water, and it makes killing these things so, so much easier. Now, admittedly, that one did run away, but that's okay because they'll respawn in, like, the vaguely same area. So we're just kind of, like, I'm just, you know, kind of going back Waiting to the around. same anchor point. But as it is, uh, you know, you saw it just literally appear. But what, if you're gatching sugared, like, you actually get to go up close to it and hit it. If you were not gatching sugared, it takes so fucking long to, like, get into the right position so it doesn't see you. So, that, so that's that bit. Just make sure you're gatching sugared. So now we're coming back up to the little platform and just to reorient you so you know where we're going. From the platform area, you're just swimming straight down and then there's this busted platform in the bottom of the water and there's a bait under it. So then, like, going right over across the big crevasse, there's another item. I'm going to pick that one up. And that's some more precious bait. So you just get, just get it so much. It's very easy. I don't know why it gives you so much because then you only use two of them. So then... Following from this side of the bottom of the lake, I guess, there's a coin purse and this other busted structure. But now, 
we have to fight two um, headless. So we're going to stick the mottled purple gourd on, and this will essentially take away your terror stat uh, in the same way that the like the, the other gourd will like heal you. This will uh, heal your terror essentially. So I guess like theoretically, it's like a, a useful item just to begin with for certain like the Seashaman warriors and stuff. I don't think the headless in Ashina Castle has that wave projectile attack. It does. It, it, it just never does really it? done it for us. Ah. I've never seen it do it. I've only ever seen this one do it. So you want to take care of this guy first, right? And I kept like, fuck it. You want to just do the the, the dashing stab attacks, uh, as you saw just there. And then you just want to use like guerrilla tactics. Do not get greedy. I, th yeah. That is my biggest, biggest tip. Do not get greedy. Just get the hit in when you can and get the fuck out of there. And you just want to keep wide circle. That way the other headless on the other side of this bit will like... It's a uh, projectile attack. You know, if you take a wide enough circle, you'll have enough time to get the dash attack into this one and then get out there before the projectile attack will hit you. I mean, it should be pretty easy to see what we're doing here. And obviously, if you know, you get that, if you if the, the red thing comes up, you'll get the iframes. So it's like fine to just take the hit when you can. And then you also deal more damage to that headless, I think, if you put on confetti before going in the water. So yeah, that that is true. You can't do the confetti on. Ghosty boy. Um, well, you do conf uh, extra damage to both of them with the confetti. Um, you in this one? Yeah. Huh. I thought this one wasn't a ghost. Uh, no, nah, it's still like you can. It might do even more more damage to the other one, but hmm. it's you still get increased damage if with the confetti, oh. like across the board. I think it's like six percent or something like that. Like to even non thingy uh, guys. Oh, no, to ghosts, it gives you like double damage. But as you can see, it's just uh, the same, the same general strategy for this guy. Again, don't get greedy. It's not worth getting greedy. I can assure you, because doing this bit for the second or third time is extremely frustrating. Yeah, every time you seem to get in close, he has this three sixty swing that he does a couple of times. That that one right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what you definitely want to watch out for. That the other attacks are like fairly fine but if he's like winding one up you dash so far underwater that you could dodge s the projectiles by like a mile and a half but that's uh that's pretty much it for that guy and then you that's get the last sugar uh yeah yeah that's the the last of these guys just in general there's no more headlesses that's though. the attack damage one i think so it's the red one so it probably is yeah almost certainly so there's some more skills down here they just man the game next gives to a the lot. uh glow worms and this is uh Gourd set? Prayer bead? One other? Uh, an item you're having? Prayer bead. Prayer bead. Cool. And I think that's it for all the items in like the bottom bottom of the lake. So now we're just swimming back up to the the, the initial structure just so you can like, you know, get, get your bearings, you, you know, using the guide light, right? So where are we from this part, you know? So here we are back on the structure. Now we're going to go over to this part. Now that part there is inaccessible from the other bits of Fountainhead that you've been to. But there's like a kind of back entrance that you need, you need to go through using like this part. and like So you, you swim under to get to the next part of the area. And then you can go to the bit that we are under currently from that part. So there's another rainbow fish here. A treasure carp here. So, yeah, yeah, treasure carp. Uh, if you swim in the reeds, it can't see you. Uh, I think if you get close enough, it can. Yeah, but... if you get close enough, it can. But at while this point, you're in you're, the reeds, yeah. it's kind of it's the same sort of deal as being in tall grass when it's like generic enemies and Ashen and stuff like that. Aye, aye, it's exactly the same as that. So if you're hiding in those reeds, then that's a little bit easier. Now, to there's none of the other treasure carps, and you don't need to take a, ca a Gatchin Sugar for any of the other ones. It's just those initial two, because there's such a wide open gap, and they can just see you from all angles, so the... The Gatchin Sugar is, like, uh, recommended. So that was us. We're coming down into this little sort of canyon area. And that was so from following valley. following the, the the wall around, like, the, the right-hand wall from that bit that we were just at. So we follow that around, and then you'll see the little valley, as you said. And then you just, like, come, like, come down in it and just follow the valley around. So now we're essentially following the, the right-hand wall around even more, even though it doesn't explicitly look like that's what we're doing but that's how you can do it just follow the right hand yeah. wall all the way around if, if you're lost in a labyrinth follow these rules keep one wall on your right at all times <laughs> yeah pretty much or so, on your left just choose when you get in so now there's like two structures and we can um 
come along. Try not to get your, your toesies bitten by the red tunas. Well, it's just big piranha. Shit, I think I just missed an item there. Just walk right past it. I swear, I, did you see that as well? That I just walked I, right past it. I item? didn't. But I, I'm going to assume that you just did. This fish is a pain in the arse to get. Yeah, all the fish are. This one I could totally understand gatching sugar for. Because this one took me the longest to get. There's a couple of other ones as well that's like a pain in the arse around here. That one right there took me forever to get. Because I'm just like, why can't I kill it? Why can't I get there in time? Well, I think you just need to use the reeds. Yeah, you do. Like, you, you, like, I mean, if you get lucky enough and it's not looking away, I thought I was able to get it, but nah, so I have to just wait for it to respawn again. Pain in the ass. At least you don't have to quit and reload like Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, that is one thing I definitely, definitely appreciate, is there's, they just will respawn after, like, 30 seconds or something. Not even, like, after, like, five seconds. So, you can follow the uh, path around even more, come through this little gap. You can also go, like, around the gap, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. So, I'm just going to go into these reeds as well. I mean, there's theoretically, there's... if you took a gatching sugar before jumping in the water, then you could, like... It's probably expired by now. Uh, well, you wouldn't have to wait about as much. You could just, like, blast right through it, so... So, that's, like, what, six fish or something in this area so far? Uh, I think there's been four. No, it's been six. I'm pretty sure that was the third one I just killed there. Well, however many is there? No, because there was well. the two that you gatching for. Oh, right, you mean the, oh, then, sure, and sure. And then these two now as well. So that's uh, like six carp. I think it's like carp seven, carp. actually. Seven, then. Yeah. Well, then. It's like seven, eight, nine carp scales or something we've gotten from just down here. Yeah. Because there was two on the ground. So there's this, like, sunken structure here, and this is kind of like a... Another kind of anchory point, if you know what I mean. You can just use this as, like, to orient yourself. So, here's the thing. In the guide, it says there's another item around in this area, and I could not fuck... It's a, it's, I mean, it's a relevant item, don't worry, but I think it's like a ceramic pot. Yeah. But I could not find it. So, if you can find another item around here, put it in the comments, because I could not find it. I think it was a mistake on the guide. Sometimes the guides do have that, so... All just of something them to mention. Had that in at least one, one or two, yeah. yeah. No, all of them have had it in at least one or two areas. So, okay, so you, you want to make sure that you don't come in here, like, too, uh, like, early, but when you are ready to do this bit, come in here, as soon as you see the fish move, just blast it down at the bottom of this valley, um, pick up this coin purse, keep going, and this is kind of how you do this part without, like, getting caught if you're, like... So, I mean, it can clearly see you, but for some reason... It can't come down here. But I don't, I don't know if it strictly is, can, but the is point another, is, is if you just follow, like, the, the bottom of it, you can just, like, straight up blast through here. And there are buildings and stuff on the sides that you're meant to swim through and, like, hide behind and stuff like that as well. Yeah. But you can just go straight to the bottom and then right back up to the top. You're way more effective. Totally avoid its cone of vision entirely. But, yeah, you are meant to go around the, the like, you're meant to swim around the sides at the same level as the giant fish and then Aye. do the whole, like hide behind the windows and it's kind of like to turn around kind of like the snake at yeah. the beginning of the game i was going to say it's like the snake but ultimately you just don't need to take it like the snake like it's, whatsoever i mean because let's face it if you could fly at that point in the game with a snake you just wouldn't deal with the snake either would you no so so the woman that i was saying should show up for some like again I, I yeah she kills all these dudes and then like kills her husband i'll put it in the comments about specifically what the deal is with that one last woman that i couldn't get to spawn here and because normally she just shows up naturally but for some reason just didn't maybe it's after the dragon uh i, I, I genuinely don't know what the, the trigger is but again i'll put it in the comments don't worry but um but she doesn't actually give you anything she just you just get dialogue, so it doesn't matter. But there's the, the final gourd seed in here, so this is obviously... Like, it's cool that you can't really miss it, I suppose. There's an idol out here, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Well, that's the idol that you're just at. Yeah. But you have to, like, come onto the roof, essentially. Now, I rested here again, thinking that once you've went in and cleared the guys out, that's when she shows up, but... It ain't. It, it ain't, so... Again, and, and so they should be like all dead or something and she's like stabbing that one or maybe she's just stabbing one of them. I can't quite remember, but it's, it's ultimately irrelevant. I know ultimate guide, right? But it's some things it just it literally just doesn't matter. It's still ultimate, even if it's irrelevant. I mean, we're still mentioning it anyway. It's ultimately irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ultimately it's irrelevant. So now we're moving on to that bit that we were like swimming underneath. 
which is uh, to get there, you have to make like a big jump across to this uh, this branch, and then there's like another jump that you make over to this roof. And then over here, and you're over in that like inaccessible area that we talked about when we were standing in the, the middle of the water. Oh. Uh, talking to what's her name. I feel like this bit's actually fairly missable if you weren't explicitly trying to look for it. Now there's only yeah, a couple I, of items. I feel like you'd probably miss this place by thinking that there was another way there that you'd find later yeah. on in the level, but it turns out there's just one branch that leads you to an entire section of Fountainhead. So take the route that we're taking, because there's only like a couple of items in this whole section really, and there's like a bunch of like drop down segments or whatever, and if you drop down one it's a pain to get back up to the other ones, so just take this route and it's just so If you fall easier. off this bridge as well, it's a total pain in the ass, by the way. You have to go all the way back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you fall in the water, you have to go all the way back up. It sucks. And then uh, up here, there's like one last uh, uh, Mongo Sugar. So, I mean, it's kind of just... It's just Irrelevant now, because you've killed all the Headless and you have the infinite use version. This is true. So, we can rest here, and now we're going to do the rest of the fish quest. This gets you like a few extra carp scales, it gets you one of those big healing items that you're going to be using for the final boss. We're going to be speaking to Fish Lenny. Yeah, it's Fish Lenny! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So ring the bell and give it two of your precious baits. Um, don't give it the truly one because you'll kill it. So don't give the truly one just yet. Yeah. So you give it two precious baits the now, and then this will give you the maximum amount of scales that you can get off the guy. If you give it more bait after this, um, the guy's just like, good job. You yeah, pretty much, fish. you just don't get any more. So this isn't like infinite use, essentially. Which makes me wonder like, what the fuck do the precious baits even do aside from this? And you get so many of them. And speak to Fish Lenny for your skills. So he'll give you like two amounts of them. And then that's like, it. so you get three and then one, and then that's like, all you're getting. So you I get, so you get, for one scale you get one, and then for two scales you get four. I think that you might be wrong and that you can feed it like five precious bait and get a scale. Well, if I'm wrong, Every I five. will put it in the comments. I think it's, I because I remember farming this for a reason and I don't think I've seen anything that said that the fish was like a, a, a finite resource. So we've given him the truly precious bait and then when you do that, you rest and, well, you don't really need to speak to him, but he's just like, Huh? Where is he? Yeah, and then you ring the bell and the fish doesn't show up. Yeah. So now you inexplicably need to go to the... Guardian Apes burrow. Yeah. And then the fish is just like, here, like, how the fuck did it get here? <laughs> fish magic, mate. Aye, I guess. Underwater tunnels through the centre of the earth. <laughs> uh... And then we I mean, just probably the same way that all the speedrunners get to Fountainhead. Just swam through the terrain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, you're right. <laughs> and then Fish Lenny is sad because his rabbits died or something. I feel kind of bad for him. I mean, you're meant to. I mean, yeah. You probably felt bad for him in the book as well. It literally goes um, Sigurd and then him for how bad I feel for the NPCs in these games. I mean, I'd probably feel less bad for him if he didn't look so depressed anyway. Like, his face just looks like a life of misery. Oh, okay. It does. Look at me. It just looks really sad. So now we are going back to the pot noble. Uh, this finishes its quest. So we get to tell him that we've uh, crushed Lenny's spirits. So there's. The, this is where the pot noble will go once you do this quest. And he is still a merchant. If you come down and speak to the new red-eyed fish. Now you basically want to do this because this is how you get one of your lapis lazulis, and yeah. then he sells two of them. So you can get four in a playthrough. Uh, you, you just can't get floating passage. That's the one. Yeah, that's the uh, the Ganitrum. Yeah, so this guy he'll sell uh, like uh, like all yeah. the pot noble shit. So now we're heading back. Oh yeah, because you could get that off of the one in Harata. And well. we are continuing on with the the thing that's coming up next is one of the bosses. Uh, I game. hate this path. Yeah, I hate it as well. Um, there's like a bunch of guys, and it's kind of hard to like just avoid them. So, but luckily we've got the axe, so it's, it's not it's not so it's not so bad. I just aerial viscerated them one after another. Oh, I mean that. I mean yeah, that would be probably work. <laughs> the ones that do like the backflip kicks with the lightning orbs and shit like that. Yeah. Those guys are just prime time for it because they're in the air for like ten seconds. So you might as well. If run you're past fast enough, you can just like straight up run up here 
uh, get the the idol and like so the thing is is that you don't really have enough time to rest so what you could do is just like run up here and then jump off the edge and kill yourself. Run up here and quick reload and then rest. Or yes, you could also run up here and quick reload and rest and that would uh, mean that you don't need to fight these guys. With me, I, I just I just did fight them. Or what I done here was I baited them down there then quickly ran up and like rested that way. And then still got hit with lightning anyway. Did I make it? Yeah, we made it. So you just kind of like juke them a little bit. Because fighting them is just a pain in the ass. You don't need to fight them. You don't get anything for fighting them. You get the reward of knowing that you beat them, which in this game doesn't account for much because as soon as you rest, they're just back. Exactly, exactly. And they don't drop any, there's nothing to farm. Yeah, there's, there's also no items aside from that dragon blood droplet, so it like literally doesn't matter. So, okay, that's, I remember now. So now we've got some story element to do before we do the boss. You need to do it at this point in the game because if you don't, once you pass this point, you then cannot get one of the endings. So, so this is... Start by eating rice. So yes, actually specifically start by eating the rice that you got from the uh Divine Child of Rejuvenation or whatever his name is. No, the reason Not for... Kuro. That's yeah. his name. Now the reason for that is it just means Current. You... Current. <laughs> it means that you don't need to go through one of the loading screens. So you rest so you come here, rest there, and then you uh request yeah, that's rice. Right. Divine Child of Rejuvenation. Yeah. Now the reason uh, so as you can see there, if you came if you didn't eat the rice before you teleported here, you'd have to eat the rice here and then teleport and come back to get the rice. So if you just take it before you come here, you just get the rice immediately. Yeah, he won't give you rice if you have rice in your pocket. Yeah. Because he's like, nah, you've got rice. Yeah, fuck, I can see your fucking rice. So you think this is soup kitchen? Get so, out of here. So now what we do, the easiest, the easiest thing to just kind of speed things along is take the rice just now, then... Uh, homeward to the dilapidated temple. Oh wait, no. Just homeward to the last idol, I guess. Uh, did I do that? I think you. I think you literally need to come to the dilapidated temple and then go back. I'm. I am so certain that you have to make it through. Like, it's like a full load of the area. If you just go back to like the bonfire last rest of that, it doesn't count. Also, you don't have to go to Sempo Temple in the menus when you're teleporting. This is in one of your important places. This is just in, like, the very first oh, option when you're warping is the 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 place with the sculptor, and it's Ashina Castle, and this place. Oh, I don't the know. three places that are in your important locations on your uh, Shit, did idle I, did teleport. I take, I, I'm not sure if I took the rice uh, right in front of them then again. I wasn't uh, explicitly... I don't, I I don't think, think I did. did. But then I think we take it here anyway. Apparently we don't, so just remember to take the rice. Yeah, just take the rice and then warp around and then go back and speak to him. He'll give you, what, three lots of rice? Oh, there we go, there we go. He'll give you three lots of rice and then his story progresses or something. So I, I didn't eat it, but um, it's okay because the story did progress. It's after he gives you the third rice, the story will progress. Yeah. You don't have to eat the third one, so you can keep that for later. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you'll find some nice chicken, some curry sauce to go with it. Oh, that would be good. Nice wee chicken curry before you fight Ishin. So now we speak again and... Because at, at this point I was like a little bit confused, but it was, uh, they wanted the persimmon, which we already got earlier. So, and then it gives you another rice. And then you get rice for Kuro. So now you need to do Kuro's part of this. Such pain loss. Yep. Oh, there's also like the whole Serpent Viscera end of this to unlock more dialogue and like his ending. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So now we have to go to the... This is when Sekiro turns into like one of those food animes. Yeah, I guess it does a little bit. So now we... cooking mama. So we come to Kuro's <laughs> room and then we give, get a little bit of dialogue with Kuro. So now we need to give Kuro the rice that we just got and then you speak to more. And Why then don't you he'll... give Kuro a boat of sake? Seems like he's seen enough that he could probably use a boat of sake at this point. I don't think you can even... I don't even think you get the... You can give him. You sake, can't. Because he's like 10 and they don't want infants drinking. So you exhaust his dialogue. He'll be like, okay, I'll cook the rice for you. Then you rest. Inexplicably, this Japanese man has never tasted cooked Wait, rice before. Wait, does this mean that Sekiro has just been eating raw rice this entire time? Yeah. So, okay, so hold on. So you get a sweet rice ball. Um, so we give you like two. Eat, One's a key eat, item. So you eat one in front of him. And then that unlocks like a little, little bit of dialogue. Spit it in his face. 
Then he'll give you another one after you speak to him. And these are actually really good for the final boss as well. It's another, like, full heal item. It's a lot better than raw rice anyway. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Man lives in Japan. There's no more rice. I find it insane. I genuinely find it insane. I I could totally fucking... I don't know why I ate the rice there again in front of him, but uh, the point is is that you, you just speak to him again and then you'll get the, the second sweet rice ball. And then I'm just like making sure that it's uh, just exhausting all the dialogue. And then you go back to the Divine Child of Rejuvenation. Current. Cur then you go and back to Current. And rice ball. I think it's a her, actually, in this case. I think it is, yeah. Is, but I think Kuro's a her. Is what it is. See, if the Divine Child was, like, manufactured, then it's more an it, isn't it? Uh, I, I suppose, I suppose. Anyway, though... Um, Excuse me, sir, this child is, pro is the product of the state and belongs <laughs> to the government. <laughs> so now, um, there's, like, a weird thing here for some reason. I got confused because she'd already, like, spoke to me and told me what I had to do next. So... This is the bit where she speaks about the serpent viscera. Or she goes like, I'm gonna do some research or whatever. Into the serpent viscera. Then you rest what we just done there. I mean, all you need to do is like follow exactly what we're doing. So really even commentating over this part is kind of pointless. Just talk until the dialogue loops and then you know you need to do something else. Yeah, that's, that is pretty much it. So then this is where she should give you the... Like, oh, we need, oh, no, 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 no. So what it is is she comes here and now you need to go get, like, a book or something from one of the... There's, like, a book in another area near the, the temple. You need to get that and then the book tells her about the serpent viscera. There's so much. Why can't this bitch go get her own book? Because there's spooky men in the book. Bit. Immortal life but can't walk up a flight of fucking stairs, <laughs> eh? <laughs> that... Lazy. Time's too long for walking up stairs. I'm surprised you never opened this door anyway, until this point. Don't need to. And teleport everywhere. Shortcuts are irrelevant. It is true, there is no reason to explore anything in this game a second time. It's There's true. no reason to play this game a second time. Well, no, to get the achievement. So it, it forces you No, no, you to I would include, twice. like, getting two platinum can count as just you playing it once. Oh, I mean... Like, if you're going for, like, the whole 100% completionist right. I mean, that's a, a bit of a stretch, the definition, frankly, but okay. Two playthroughs, fine, but, like, I don't see myself picking up Sekiro again. So you can literally just run past every enemy in this area and then keep running. You kind of, like, double back and... Slide under some rocks... There's like there's the last time you came here, this guy was in the in this cave bit, I guess. But you just run straight past him. But now when you go to him, they'll be like he was like holding an item. Then you get that item, and then she tells you about the serpent viscera, and then you give her, and then you go give her the serpent viscera. But the thing is, is the, you've already done all this shit. I think this game is structured in a really weird way because you can just like combine all the story elements into like one part of the game. So. Do you know, it's just kind of weird, like, because you've already gotten all the shit that she's asked you to get. It's just like, oh, it just so happens that I killed the snake anyway. <laughs> I just felt like it. <laughs> so now... Oh, so that's the problem with being a player in a game, is that an, upon a second playthrough, you have the gift of hindsight at all times, where you can just be like, oh, I'm going to need all of these things for later. Yeah, so she speaks about the thing that looks like the, per the uh, persimmon. So you give her the snake persimmon. So, the first one is the regular Serpent Viscera, and I think the second one is the Dried Serpent Viscera. Yeah, something And that's like that. how you choose the ending. The top one is, like, the no, ending. No, 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 no. I think she just asked for both. Is it at that point? It doesn't matter. Just do what we're doing. I, I've literally not read any of the dialogue. I've just blasted it through just it. Just back up your save. <laughs> and <laughs> then blast through it. Choose the other one next time. So... No, 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 you only have the option of like give her the give her it or not give her it. It's not give her oh, one yeah. of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, then you reset and then she's like, oh I'm ill or whatever, and then you reset again and what then speak to her. When you eat a snake heart, of course you're gonna get ill. And then we get the frozen tears. Now the frozen tears is the item that you give Kuro in order to keep him alive. Um, I didn't let him die. <laughs> fucking hell. Okay. I feel like the keep him alive ending is like the best ending, I suppose. He wants to die to end, like, the whole feud over his bloodline. 
No, but he he die. It like cures him of his like ailment or whatever. So like he, it's like it just solves everything. Like he gets to stay alive and it like does the thing. So now we give her the final gourd seed, and then we can move on with the boss. I mean, you don't even really need the last heal for the boss to be fair, but like it is what it is. Now with all the spare skill points as well. I mean, I mentioned this in the next point, but you can use your skill points like to just level up kind of whatever you want. But I recommend leveling up at least finishing one of the uh, skill trees. Uh, the second one, I think it's whatever. I think it's the um, the one we each Jumanji is the, by far the one that I suggest the most. Well, the thing is, is we've already finished. Uh, we've already nearly finished the prosthetic skill tree, so I recommend just. I mean, in the guide we do it anyway, but we max out the prosthetic skill tree, and then, then when you speak to Emma, she will give you another like the final skill tree. Okay, so when dealing with this, uh, these guys. It's quite annoying. You can just you just mash R1 through these guys. Like this boss isn't difficult, but I guess the difficulty is trying to minimize the time spent mashing R1. So you can use Mortal Draw here to kind of just like melt through an amount of them. You know that when you know you can do the thing. Uh, you can you can also do Whirlwind Slash as well. But no, if you hop up onto the trees, you can do Aerial Viscerals and explode, and it does things to all of them in the group. And explode what? Like they explode when you do the Aerial Visceral or something like that. I can't remember what it does, but there's a reason to do the Aerial Visceral. I think it like detonates and it kills a bunch of them around it. Um, I did not. I can't know remember, that. but you can you can just. Sling up onto the tree and aerial visceral. Even if they know that you're there, you can just keep jumping up and jumping down and constantly doing the visceral to them. I can't remember what it does though. But yeah, you can do that because this this part of the fight is just irritating. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, and then, but I mean, as you can see, mortal draw is like basically fine as well. And then, even though the trees yeah. are supposed to do like damage to you, or whatever, most of the time is spent like getting your iframes. You're in iframes most of it. Yeah. Yeah. You're basically immune. But you can, yeah, Mortal Draw, Whirlwind Slash, all this shit. Just start spamming out all your AoE abilities. Essentially, you need to, like, kill, like, there's not, like, one of them to kill. You just need to, like, kind of kill all of them, to be honest. Yeah, eventually, after you've done enough, like, r winning. Yeah. Now, we got hit with the tree there, but we managed to dodge, like, an amount of them just from getting in a whole bunch of visceral attacks. So, there we go. That's uh, it'll fade away and then you get to the boss. That's stage one. Now the boss is ludicrously easy, which is which is good finally. Like you, you start you like you catch a break for one boss. I mean obviously yeah. we've cheesed our way through the full game, but if Unless this you don't know how to lightning reversal. Yeah, I suppose. So as you can see, it does like these vertical slashes at this stage, so you just need to run to one side. And then when one of these Yeah. And it's so it's so telegraphed as well. So you it's not even an actual lightning tr like reversal in this one. It's, it's a, a scripted, like very easy one. Yeah. So you get so you repel up to one of the branches that's glowing. Then you'll get hit with the lightning, and then you just press R one in mid there to just launch a big bolt at him. And then you just repeat that until yeah. it died. Now, inexplicably, I died twice to this guy. I have no idea how. You used to get better at DDR. That's all this boss is. Do you go left, right, or jump? Like, it kept fucking up the timing for certain pets. It was so odd, like, dying to this guy. I'm like, how is that even physically possible? Um, there's definitely, like, something bugging out. But as you can see, it is super easy. Like, there you go. That is just how you do it. There's no ifs or buts. Just dodge the massively telegraphed either vertical or sweeping attacks. You can also uh, block or deflect all of these attacks as well. Yeah, if you just want to be a total chad. Yeah. <laughs> just be like, fuck you. But every like two or three um, lightning blast that you hit it with, it'll do like, a big AOE sort of deal. So it kind of like um, and it like, resets the board, I guess. Yeah, like you saw this big gust of wind. Like if you didn't, if I didn't run back, so there you go. Like you can just like deflect all these this guy's attacks. Yeah. Uh, at this point, it is a little bit easier I found to deflect rather than like try to dodge because they're, you know, he's like either going vertical and they're really quick or whatever. So moving to one side wasn't especially effective. Yeah. But as long as you just keep moving forward. Imagine you could Makira counter this guy. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> now, so here's the thing. Um, this part is kind of like a like a gauntlet thing. You just need to like survive these attacks, and then the branches will show up again. 
It's very easy to survive that flurry if you just pick a direction and run in it, by the way. If you just run to the side and jump. So because there's no there's no need to deflect or dodge the verticals if you're always sprinting. You saw like a weird thing happen there as well, where it launched me in the air like twice because initially it didn't do the lightning strike. I don't know what the deal was. I guess this Maybe you is... caught two. Maybe. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> just excuse me. I'd like to stab it in the Sekiro's just standing there with a sword. Like, there's something I'm meant to do here. <laughs> What so is you, it? So now you get the dragon tears, and this is like the required item for like the main ending, I suppose. But we've done all the stuff for the secret endings, so we're all good. So now we just you just get teleported back into Kuro's room, and this is this should be the bit that I'll explain with uh, Emma. It's like yo Kuro, give me another fucking rice ball. So you get uh, uh, the dragon memory, so you can upgrade your attack more. You get like a whole bunch of experience. And she will say to you, like, uh, he was meant to give me something, but you're not ready yet, or something along the lines of that. But basically all that is, is like, go level up just now. In fact, I think I'll do it just now. I finish one of the skill trees, and then she'll give you the, like, the final skill tree. So this is the one that I recommend to level up, because you should be, you should have most of these. And this requires the least amount of skill points to finalize at this stage of the game, if you've been doing everything we've been doing. I think this was the first one that, I, that was the first one I finished uh, on my first go through the game anyway. Yeah. And plus it's actually like the, the skill's pretty like it's, it's Living like Living okay. Force is fucking great. Yeah. Now the final skill tree is, gives you like, it's like buffed versions of all the final attacks. Um, I've never actually really used any of them, but I guess they're kind of cool. Uh, just remember to upgrade your attack here because we've got a memory but I didn't explicitly do it. But that is it for Fountainhead, you know, don't need to go back and do Fountainhead again. Thank God. Yeah, there's literally no reason to ever go back to that area, except to spend your carp scales, which, yeah. what, what have you got to buy at this point? You probably have enough to buy everything. You might need so. to get like another lapis lazuli or whatever, but you can just get that from the vendor. You just need to teleport to the pot noble and jump down to the fish. But well, I mean, there's no other way for you to get carp scales, so I hope you've bought them. Yeah, that's true. You need to go into the fucking Harata State New Game Plus to get your next set of carp scales, and you won't have underwater breathing at that point either, will you? I think that gets taken off you when you go into New Game Plus. Well, this was clever. Anyway, I guess that's that for that part, and uh, hopefully it was enjoyable, hopefully it was informative, and we'll see you in the next part, which Can't is... Can't be worse than Fountainhead Palace, at least. Ashina Castle Part 3. Again? Yeah.